Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about matter, kind of what it is and kind of how it works uh, and introduce ourselves into different properties of matter as we kind of move forward. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between matter and energy. Okay, So matter is basically anything that we have in our universe that we can put our hands on. Okay, So it has to have volume, it has to have shape, and it has to have mass to it. Whereas other things that we sometimes talk about in terms of energy, those are things that we can't physically touch. So we're talking about like light and sound and electricity and heat. Those are things that we classify more as energy. So matter is going to be kind of the chemicals we work with or the physical things that we touch. Whereas we talk energy, we're talking about those things that we can't really touch. Uh, we might be able to see or hear them, but we can't really put our hands on them. Okay. So as we define matter, we're actually talking about anything that has volume or has mass. Okay, um, which leads us down this idea of what is volume because that's one of the two word terms inside of our definition here. So volume, sometimes students misdefine this, even though we kind of know what volume is, right? Um, and if you really look at what volume is, we're talking about space, right? We're talking about shape and space and that kind of stuff. So we want to define that as the space an object takes up. Okay, so how much volume does something have in it? Okay, it really doesn't matter how much matter is there. It really matters how much volume it takes up or how much space it occupies in that given amount of time. Okay, and then we start looking at this idea of mass and not weight. So why don't we just say, you know, it's the amount of volume and weight something has because weight is a measure we use quite often. And we really want to be careful with weight because weight is different than mass as you start looking at the scientific world. Now, on our planet, walking around on the surface of our planet, we can interchange mass and weight pretty easily, and it's not a big deal. But when you start talking in a chemistry world, and especially in the world of physics, uh, these two words start to mean some very different things. Okay, Mass, we always define back as just the amount of matter in an object. So how much matter really is stuck inside that space or that volume of something that it has? Okay, And those two terms together, mass and volume, will start to lead us down this road of what density is and how dense a substance is. It's that ratio of how much mass to volume gives us density, okay? Weight is just a gravitational pull. So basically, when we're on the surface of our planet, how much gravity is pulling us downward, okay? Um, so that's where weight kind of comes from. So we have to be careful with weight because when you move from different spots on our planet, or if you move off our planet, or if you do experiments that are independent of gravity, then weight really wouldn't apply properly there. So. In our class, and especially next year in physics, we'll always talk about massing things and be part of the mass of something, and we kind of stay away from weights uh, as best we can. Now, I'll do my best as we go through the year to kind of help you guys with that because a lot of times you'll say things like, hey, Mr. Dirksen, I weighed this, and I'll say, oh, you massed it? Because we really aren't taking any weights in here. We're taking masses at all times. Okay. Now, what that brings us to this idea of, well, how do we actually measure these two key things? Because throughout the year, these are the most these are definitely the two most important things that we measure in a lab setting, the volume of things and the mass of things. Okay, I mean, 99% of our measurements, besides temperature, um, probably come off of volume and masses, and that's what we do. So to do that, we have two different devices. Okay, um, so we pull these over here, and then down below, I have. Um, hold on here. I have a graduated cylinder. So when we're measuring volume, we want to measure using a graduated cylinder. Now graduated cylinders, what's better about them is they're tall and skinny, which means we get lots of lines on there, lots of graduations to give us a more precise measurement. And I have a little water in here. You can see that water is kind of sitting in there right now. And it would be kind of hard for me to measure the height of this water the way it looks right now because I don't have a background on it. So what I want to do is get a little piece of paper that's got a little black mark on it, and I'm going to use that on the back side of my graduated cylinder and you notice when I do that and I get a nice black background I can see where the water ends much easier than if I was just trying to use it reading through to that box back there. So by doing this what we're looking for is the bottom of the meniscus which is we're looking for the bottom of that little curvature you see in that line. So if we go up and down we see that curvature there we want to measure to the bottom of that. And if I did that, if you looked at that, it's probably about 63.5, 63.6 maybe milliliters of water is what I put inside this graduated cylinder. Okay. We always want to measure volumes with graduated cylinders. We do not want to use beakers. We do not want to use flasks because beakers and flasks are not designed for measuring. They're designed for holding and storing and stirring and that kind of stuff. Um, they're not built precisely enough. Now, for mass, we use an electronic balance. Okay. 
So here's our electronic balance. We have several different types of those, but this is the one that we're going to be using uh, today in our little video. Um, some common things on it, you know, you have your on-off button over here. The units, PCS, and calibrate, you should never have to touch, uh, unless it doesn't say grams right there. If it doesn't say grams, then you will want to change your units to grams. Okay? And over here we have our zero button. Basically allows us to reset the balance to zero. Now, it should be zero when you walk up to it like this, but if somebody has left something on it that has a mass, and you notice that even that little piece of paper, yeah, it's 0.32 of a gram. Okay, so it actually has mass. It's very light to us, but these are pretty sensitive balances. Um, so they pick up very, very small amounts of mass on them. Okay, now meaning that they're sensitive, it also means that they're very easily damaged. So we got to make sure that we're careful. We don't put too much mass on the plates here. Okay, so if let's take an object. Let's say we want to know what the mass of this little two-port charger is. We have it all set. We make sure we hit the zero button so it's zeroed out. Um, that little circle right there tells us that it's ready to go. That means ready. And then we put this on here. And if you look just for an instant, that circle will go away. And then it comes back and says, okay, I'm ready. So this is 44.16 grams. All right, there we go. So we have the mass of this. Pretty simple. You guys have probably used balances before, but we just wanted to kind of check those out real quick with you guys also. All right. So in this video, we talked about matter compared it to energy, and then kind of those definitions of volume and weight and mass, and kind of gave you some ideas of, of the two most commonly used tools that we're going to use in our lab today, the graduated cylinder and electronic balance. Thank you.